Welcome to No Ordinary Woman, where we recognise and celebrate women of all ages and all stages of this happy life. I'm very excited to have with me today Sean from Big Oz Explorers. Hi, Sean. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. No problem. <laughs> um, I just want to give the viewers a bit of a background. Um, Sean has, uh, Sean and her husband Chris sold up their entire life, their house and possessions, and bought a caravan to live their dreams and go on the road with their daughter and infant son, their daughter Jada and infant son Jack, um, and they are living their dreams now. Um, how's, how did that happen? Oh, very good <laughs> question. <laughs> um, we actually had some friends. So prior to leaving, I was doing nursing. And um, one of my friends, she wanted to do exactly what we're doing. And I watched her go through the setup process of what was involved. And when she first told me, I was like, you're crazy. What were you thinking? <laughs> like, why would you do such a thing? But through their highs and lows and figuring out that it was achievable, uh, we attempted it. And it was me that was always the ball and chain and the reason that we may not have gone on the road. And I remember one day saying to Chris, I just... I looked at him in the car we were driving away from home and I said do you want to travel Australia and he's like uh yeah um okay yes <laughs> is this a real thing I was like yeah, yeah a real thing like let's do it and the house was on the market about a month later so whoa yeah it was like pretty yeah. quick <laughs> that that's huge and you answered my first question because I I have been the, my kids are grown up now but I have been the mother of an infant child and um, my first question is, what were you thinking? <laughs> so. yeah, well, it's, I don't know, I guess like first child, you know, is a real challenge as most first time mums yes. know. Second child, I think everything becomes a little bit more relaxed. Yeah. And uh, if he was completely newborn, I yeah. probably wouldn't have wanted to do it yet. And to be honest, that was one of my holdbacks. It was that and also losing security of having a house and having yeah. to go to. Um, but the fact that he was that little bit older and he was able to sit up and things were changing about him, it was like, you know what, we can make this work. Like, he can't run away. Wow. He's not going to get in trouble with Crocs. He's, yeah. you know, he's safe. Yeah. Why not? Like, he loves being in a car. It yeah. makes sense. You have the same issues whether you live in a caravan or a house, really. That's a really good point. Yeah. You, yeah. You're still going to have really good days and really bad days with a kid in a house yeah. as you do in a caravan. Just yeah. the space is a bit different. Yeah, uh, hard changes. <laughs> I know. I tell you what, this is it's. I, I don't know about the others watching, but this has been a dream of mine. I keep saying to my husband, like, why don't we just buy a caravan and live in a caravan? And he's like, yeah. Where's all our stuff going to go? And, and watching you, we've been very much living vicariously through um, Sean for the for the lockdown because we've been in Melbourne, so we've been living vicariously through Sean and Chris. Um, but uh, one of the things that I wanted that I'm, I'm hoping that you can inspire other women that have been dreaming about doing something with their life, what yeah. sort of um, fears and obstacles and doubt did you have to overcome to push yourself through to get this? So, I mean, it's like it, whether you're trying to move into a caravan, you're starting university, you know, you're going to have a child, getting married, it doesn't matter what it is. They're all massive life events, really. And no matter what it is, you're always going to have fear. You're always going to have anger. You're probably going to have some upset. You're going to have all these things. But I think the key to getting through it, you need to be open mm. and communicate. So, you know, use your partner and lean on them for some support. Make sure you talk about what's going on and just, you know, you've got to have some faith in yourself too. If you think yeah. you can do it, you're going to be able to do it. You really, you're going to be able to do it. Yeah. And I mean, even for us, like I knew we were going to get there, but initially I've had days where I've cried, I've been angry, yeah. I've changed my mind. And then you doubt everything and the house is already sold and you think, oh my God, what did we do? But yeah. I would never go back. And yeah. I think you've got to be able to maybe before you get to the point that you're making all those decisions, set some goals, uh, choose what you want to do with your life. So, you know, for us, we said we wanted to have a caravan um we needed to have x amount of money in the bank you know we needed to have a budget for what it was going to be to live on the road we needed to figure out homeschooling all of these goals yeah and to slowly tick them off uh, and yeah. as you tick them you know you realize you're getting somewhere even though you don't feel like you're getting somewhere sometimes yeah yeah you know um 
sometimes something so small it doesn't feel like you did anything but it's a tick on the list and that makes you feel better and yes. eventually when you get through it all write a new goal list and so when you get there you just you feel accomplished even though you know you've been going through all these ups and downs and emotions and everything when you get to the end you're like oh my god I did it yeah you, know, you get to look back on it yes um, yeah. So you might not feel it in the moment, but you feel it afterwards and you just yeah. got to push on through and just have faith in yourself that you can do it because yeah. everyone deserves to live their dream. Everyone should oh, live their dream. I love yeah. that. And it's so true. And like, I'm a big believer in, in the saying that everything you've ever wanted is on the other side of fear and you don't yeah. wait for the fear to go away. You've actually just got to push through it. And like you were saying there, if you've got if you've kind of set up some safety nets and you've set up what your goals and, and things are yeah. that you can tick off as you go, um, did you also think about what might be, um, what might cause us to doubt ourselves to sort of overcome those things beforehand or have you tackled them as you've gone? Um, we, well, we literally, we wrote a goal list, like I said, and that was down to things like, for example, a massive one was budget. Yeah. Can we afford to do this? Yeah. If you can't afford to do it. You can't obviously do it yet. You've got to yeah. save longer. So um, we just write it down. We discuss it, work it out. And if it looked like it was going to work, you have to take a leap of faith. Yes. There's nothing else you can do. I mean, and that's the point, I think, where a lot of people go, oh, my God, I can't do that. Yeah. That, that's massive. You know, that's everything in that. But you, you've got to go over those hurdles to get something new in life and, you know, live your dream in a sense sometimes like you read about all these business owners and women that have just done amazing things in their lives mm -hmm. and everyone has been at that area where there's so much fear and doubt and they've sold everything or they've done everything just to get to that place where they want to go yeah it's just one of the things you have to do yeah it is <laughs> so scary it's it really is. scary I think, I think that's a really good message. It's like it wasn't that you guys weren't scared and didn't have any doubts and fears. It's that you just planned well, overcame yeah. those doubts and pushed through those fears because sometimes we don't actually overcome the fear. We've got to just do it while we're scared. Um, otherwise, there. you just don't ever find out what you're capable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, the other thing that impresses me, so you've, you've packed up, you've gone on the road and it's been about, look, I'm going to leave a link to Shan's YouTube channel below so that you, the, the viewers can watch this. But I've got, done a little bit of research. Um, you've got 10,500 subscribers on YouTube. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Your videos have had 700,000 views. Yeah. This is how many people are excited about watching these guys do this. You've yeah. just hit 4,000 followers on Insta. Yeah. And you've got about 6,500 on Facebook. Is that right? Yeah. So while you're traveling around, managing juggling two children and being on the road and sometimes very dusty, dirty roads, how are you recording videos, editing videos and finding the time to do everything you have to do? Um, in all honesty, the GoPro has just become an extension of our arm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. so everything we do, the GoPro is there, you know, yep. you don't know what you're going to record and what you're going to get. And if to give you some stats, like here's an example, we went to Cape York, we did yes. the trip for over six weeks and that has 800 gigabytes of film, mm. 800 oh. gigabytes. And every episode, by the time the episode is made, it's a four gigabyte episode. So wow. you know what I mean? Like you just, you have to bring it right down and break it down. But yeah, it's, it's not easy, but in saying that, I mean, when you're at home, you have a full-time job usually and you're bringing in an income to support your lifestyle. Yeah. And instead of doing that, our full-time job now is filming. Oh, you know, right. So I, I take some time out to do the editing. Yeah. Uh, Chris will take some time out to go and do some filming, you know, and Chris does most of the socials. So I don't yeah. really even look at that. That's Chris. But YouTube, yeah. right? I look back yeah. on YouTube and that's my job now. Yeah. So I used to be a nurse and now I'm a YouTuber in a sense, you know. Wow. So it fills your time. Um and having the kids around, I mean, they're a part of what we're doing. So if you're recording, being by the pool, the kids are there. Yeah. You know, so you don't need a babysitter to find, you know, the time to be able to do things because yeah. you're traveling the road. So they're supposed to be a part of it. Um, yeah. The hardest thing is just the editing. Yeah. Uh, the editing takes time and you've got to be away in a sense, yeah. but it helps to have a really supportive partner. Yeah. So, I'm very lucky having Chris from that perspective because yeah. I, I couldn't imagine him editing. <laughs> yeah, the GoPro, the GoPro is literally just part of your arm and yeah. everything you do, you just film it all. 
Yeah, wow. Um, it, it just impresses me that you do that. And, and even um, Jada, your daughter, has gotten involved and every now and then she talks. And I love, she's she's a very articulate and intelligent little girl for her age. And she just seems to be so naturally talking to all of us out there in YouTube land. How does she yeah. go with it? Uh, she, she wants her own GoPro and she's asked to have her own YouTube channel. But she's got the idea of it, but she still needs to practice a little bit more. So I said, for now, you can do bits in our one. You know what I mean? She's like, cool, can yeah. I have the GoPro? And she'll go disappear and, you know, talk to the GoPro and whatnot and tell everyone about what's going on. And it's like, who is this child? I know. Well, she's I, looking at her, her um, role model of a mum. So do you reckon yeah. you've got a little Bindi Irwin on your hands for the future? Uh, mm -hmm. Possibly, yes. She, her favourite thing is animals. She loves animals. And, yeah, um, yeah she, so when we were at home, she was extremely confident. Mm -hmm. And this has just brought out even more. She's pretty much like seven going on 17. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't they all? Yeah. <laughs> yes. The best experience for her, like another thing in amongst living our dreams, in a sense, yeah. we, she's living her dreams. You know, in the beginning, she said, I only want to go for a year. I need to go home. I've got family and that. Yeah. And I said to her just two days ago, I said, do you love what we do? She said, I love what we do. I said, if you could go home now and go to normal school and live in a house, or if you could stay and carry on doing what we're doing, what would you do? She said, I'd stay here. <gasps> wow, so, that's awesome. And she's set in her way. She has an opinion and that's that. So to change that, that's like, Awesome. yeah wow that yeah, yeah it's not a lot of kids get to experience that in their life it's yeah it's amazing will you continue to do this or are you just playing it by ear well i can't reveal the details yet. oh right around, but <laughs> things are changing for us significantly which means we're going to be staying on the road right um, inside scoop <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's like one of those things I actually can't say a lot about yet. No, that's okay. Out. But um, yeah, we it's not 12 months anymore. We'll be on the road for a while. So <sighs> that's yeah. exciting. So for <laughs> anyone okay. watching, you need to follow yeah. Big Oz Explorers to find out what the rest of this exciting episode yeah. is. <laughs> we, uh, we have, it's part of our goal list, you know, was to be able to financially support ourselves to stay on the road and continue doing this lifestyle and we're we're reaching those goals so wow that's amazing and congratulations I love seeing people succeed and I yeah. think that's really awesome um the one thing I did want to know though because you're living in a small space with your family and I know that women are like the backbone of a family yeah. how do you maintain your self-care and your time out when there really isn't anywhere to go um, that's a really good question because <laughs> there are some days where it just doesn't happen yeah um, and there's other days where you have to ask for it as well yeah uh, when you live in a small space obviously like our bedroom is the kids bedroom our yeah. bathroom is the kids bathroom um yeah. like when I have a shower especially if we're off grid you've got to have a rush shower but on grid I'll take a lot longer just because yeah. I can because <laughs> it's, it's a small <laughs> space where I'm by myself <laughs> yeah I know you know, Jack will be sleeping when he's in the bed sleeping and we'll make a point to sit outside and yeah. tell Jada, go for a bike ride, take a radio, go for yeah. a bike ride and go see what you can find in the park and stuff. Yeah. And then Chris and I can hang out and chill out, you know. Um, yeah. Finding your own time is difficult. Yeah. You've just got to take the time to ask the question. So I've just, I, my main support person being Chris, I'll just mm -hmm. ask, can you oh. have the kids please yeah. so that I can go do something. I honestly, like at the moment, I need a haircut. It's, yeah. I, I don't even know how long it's been. It's due for a cut though. There's so many things I need doing, but I just keep putting them back because yeah. my issue is, is I think of other people. So okay. I always put everyone else first and I forget about my own needs, which is probably, it's not the greatest thing. You need to think about yourself because you've got to live with number one. Yes. But the biggest bit of advice I can probably say to anyone who needs to find their own time is ask for it. Yeah. People, yes. You know, yeah. it's, you just if you forget to ask for it then you may not get it and then it becomes yeah. a problem but ask and for it and get it yeah I, I think that's a really great point that you make because women put other people first they put their kids first their yeah. families first their partners first and and asking for it is not something that I think comes very easily because then we're feeling selfish and the whole idea of putting yourself first seems really counterintuitive for a woman so it's yeah. like I always, I always like to remind myself that if I'm not at my best, I can't take care of the other people around me yeah. at, at my best either. So I need to yeah. take care of myself. 
Um, so it's yeah, it's a good thing to be aware of. And I just thought how challenging it must be in your yeah. situation because there is no escape. <laughs> the one thing that I do get each day now that I'm thinking about it, which is pretty cool, um, Jack, he still wakes up in the night for a feed. Mm -hmm. And then in the morning, he usually gets up like 5.36 or so. Chris actually gets up in the mornings oh. and takes Jack. And mm -hmm. I get to have an extra hour of sleep in. And that's, oh, yeah, that's Chris. Oh, I know. How good is it? That's so happening. yeah, that's that's something which is totally for me. Yeah. And I hear that Jack's awake and I totally don't get up. And oh, I let Chris do it, but he lets me do that as well, which is really cool. So yeah. that's yeah, I don't do mornings. Yeah. <laughs> Allowing and <Perfect. your> sleep. <laughs> but it's good to know, and you're right, you need a really good support person there and, and yeah. you do a lot. There there's been a couple of things that have really um that, that have stood out for me in your videos. Um, one is that you get involved in learning everything and that really impresses me as a woman but I don't do that because I, I look at engines or all the things that you've done that you've learned how to do like installing the thing in the back of your car and you're learning how to do everything I'm like she's such an amazing hands-on woman and I am not that woman um, I'm like let somebody else do it because d details hurt my head so yeah. encouraging other women out there that we're, we've all got different gifts and skills so we don't have to be the same but yeah. you really get your hands on everything. You love that yeah. stuff, yeah? I'm a tomboy, I guess. Like growing up, mum said I was the son she didn't have. Because <laughs> you need something done and I'd bring the drill and everything. Yeah. I have the tools and I'd go around and fix it up. And I mean, I have the ability to still be very feminine, but I, yeah. I enjoy the other side as well. Yeah. So I think that's why I get involved. I like to know a little bit about everything. Because yeah. one day if I'm by myself yeah. and, you know, what if, let's just say something happened and Chris got bitten by a snake or something and I had to pack the caravan up and I had to do all the, the man jobs in a sense. Yeah. I hate that they're man jobs, but, yeah. you know, it, it requires I want more thing. strength. Yeah, well, then I'm an all-rounder person. There's nothing yeah. that I can't do. And cool. I, I love that. Like, I don't like things defeating me. Yeah. But then from the other side of things, although I can do a lot of those male tasks, it, that sort of stuff, mm. I'm shocking with makeup. I go as far as mascara. Yeah. I, you know, I don't fall into that category. And I think every person's different like that. You know, everyone has something that they're strong with. Yeah. Um, for me, I, I enjoy that outdoors and get in there and get dirty and have a sweat over something. Yeah. I, you awesome. know, I see other people there in the crafts, other people in the things, whatever your strength is, like that's what you're yeah. going to focus on. And that's mine. That's yeah. all. And not feel bad because somebody else can do something that you can't. And I think that's yeah. something that women tend to do a little bit. And it's like, no, 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 yeah. it's not that you are less than. It's just that that's not your gift. And so, yeah. and that's lucky Everyone that we all have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I love watching you get into all that sort of stuff and doing that because that's not my, it's not my interest or gift at all. But the other thing that I really wanted to point out, and I wanted to ask you a question. You've taken some pretty cool spills and falls on, in your travels. And yeah. I wonder whether you would put together a falls montage for YouTube with some funny, you know, Benny Hill type music of you just taking uh, it I really should, hey, because, yeah, it's actually become a thing now. So whenever something happens, Chris is like, what have you done, Sean? You know, and. I've got new scars coming up here. I've got yeah. another one on my leg. They're all over the place because I'm just clumsy. Yeah. <laughs> it's shocking. I get bruises. I get scabs. I, yeah, montage would be cool. <laughs> the reason why I bring that up is because my husband won't let me do anything that could potentially lead to that because I too am clumsy. Like, if yeah. I, like I, I don't think I've ever been in the kitchen without burning myself. And so we'll be watching you and I'll be going, careful, careful, careful when you're walking on the rocks because I'm <laughs> imagining me walking on the rocks and then my husband's freaking out because he's like, I would fall. And yeah. I'm really worried about you falling. But I think that would uh, yeah. be a pretty fun montage. Of <laughs> yeah. Sean, yeah, Sean spills. Yeah, I, there's, it's got to the point. There's certain things I say to Chris. I'm like, you need to carry Jack. I can't do this. You need to do that because I won't make it. Like, <laughs> yeah, the rest of us are sitting on the edge of our seats, going, oh. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. We need to stop telling ourselves we're clumsy because we end up becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. But you, are, you are not clumsy, Sean. You just go get up. Yes, I just get out there and happen to fall over. <laughs> Brilliant. So, so to wrap up, can you tell me what has been your biggest highlight on this journey? Oh, biggest highlight? Mm. Oh, in, in what sense? of place? Of anything you like, anything. If you could pluck out something that has made this all worthwhile. Um, the, the thing that's made it all worthwhile, 
worthwhile, hopeless. <laughs> yeah. The thing that made it worthwhile yeah. is that I can be with my family 24-7. Yeah. I think that's what's made it worthwhile. Yeah. Um, I spend every day with Jada, every day with Jack, mm. you know, every day with Chris. We get to see each other's milestones and experience things together and have family time, like quality time. And I think in a normal day-to-day nine-to-five life, that sometimes doesn't fit in. Yeah. Not because we don't want to, it just doesn't fit in. And our that is our life now. Yeah. Like that that's probably the biggest thing, I reckon. But it'd be so hard to lose that now. Yeah. Wow, um, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And, and the last one I wanted to ask you that just popped into my head is what is the biggest thing you've learned about yourself throughout this journey? Um myself. How what's the word how much i can multitask i guess not multitask at the same time as in um how many tasks i am able to complete (laughs) like what what you were saying before about getting out and doing the man side of things and that like i love that i video edit we do youtubing you know i'm a parent uh we're socialites with fans you know there's like we we mountain climb there's nothing that we can't do in a sense and i've out that I can do a lot more than I thought I could. Wow, you are yeah. a woman. Hear you roar. Yeah, hear me roar. <laughs> oh, oh, what a great point to end on. Like women yeah. can literally do anything. You are no ordinary woman, Shan. And <laughs> like, just it, it has been an absolute pleasure um, watching you and your YouTube channel and speaking with you as well. Um, and just really thank you for your time today because I know you're up in the Northern Territory at the moment, aren't you? Uh, yeah, we're in Catherine at the moment. Catherine. In the off season when it's really hot and no one's supposed to come here. But again, we can do anything. <laughs> we can do anything. Yeah. Oh, that is amazing. And I just want to remind our viewers if you want to follow Shan on Big Oz Explorers and follow her adventures and watch her um, as she shines and shows us her no ordinary woman moments, I'll leave a link to their YouTube channel in the comments below. And give them a follow and, um, yeah, it's really fun to watch. I highly recommend it. But thank you, Sean, so much for sharing your story with us today. Thank you. Thank you. You are so welcome. If you've liked this video, give us a like and share it with your friends as well. And I look forward to seeing you for No Ordinary Woman next time. Bye for now.